Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days, and we continue locating web elements for automation course. We're going to learn about XPath, CSS, and Playwright locators. Today we're going to do introduction to locators. As you can see, this is the first module. Here we're going to get introduced to the locators and what they are. So, what are locators? A locator is the way to identify elements on a web page. Locators are essentially strategies or methods used to find and interact with web elements, such as buttons, text fields, links, drop-down menus, and checkboxes. They serve as instructions for automation tools like Playwright, Selenium, and Cypress, enabling them to accurately target and manipulate elements during test execution. Locators play a crucial role in web automation as they allow scripts to perform various actions, such as clicking a button, entering text, selecting options from a dropdown, or verifying whether an element is visible on the page. Automation tools offer multiple types of locators, including CSS selectors, XPath, ID, class name, and text-based locators. Choosing the right locator is critical for creating stable tests, as poorly chosen locators can lead to brittle tests that fail due to minor changes in the web page's structure. So what we're gonna do now is using Chrome, we'll navigate to the internet.heroquoapp.com slash login and explore some of the locators ourselves. We're gonna open DevTools and type into console uh, XPath locator and we're gonna type a CSS locator. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are at the login um, for the internet.heroku.com forward slash login. And here on the page, you can see there's a form to log in into the page, it has username field, password field, login button, and some text, right? If you right click, and you should be in Chrome, right? If you right click it, you'll see a drop down menu. At the very bottom, you will see inspect. Hit on the inspect, and you will have a dev tools open it up. So this dev tools has a bunch of different tabs, elements, console, sources, network, performance insights, performance, and so on and so on, right? What you will mainly gonna be looking into elements and the console tabs. Uh, you can also switch to the console up top to have the whole console to, uh, available to you, or you can be in the elements tab and then have a console at the bottom. So you can have two of them open simultaneously. Now, this elements tab represents a DOM tree. So essentially, this is the whole uh, page that you see in the UI packaged into this HTML code. From the very top to the bottom, this is the whole page here. And you can navigate through this to find a particular element you want to interact with. So if I will go and get on to a specific element I want to interact with and hit inspect on that element, for example, password field right here, and I hit inspect, you will see how HTML expands and get you directly to that element where it is and here now you can see a bunch of text about this element it has input type password name password id password and so on so a bunch of things are shown here okay so how can we start selecting those and finding them so we can return them and use them for automation to grab i prefer starting manually kind of understanding how you pick things and then we can kind of progress to more advanced things but the, the the base level of it how you can confirm the element is there is by using console so you can start with let's start with finding this password field using something called xpass right all right so to do that you type dollar sign x and then parentheses open now within those parentheses you will provide the xpass first we'll have double quotes so in the double quotes we'll have the whole thing and then let's do forward slash forward slash input. Uh, let's open square bracket at ID equals and then single quote password, single quote. So we can open and close and then we close the square bracket. That's the whole thing. So in here we contain the pass to the element. If I click enter, you will see I have something returned and I can expand it. There's only zero. So that means 
counting starts with zero, like zero, one, two, three, that means there's only one element. If there's like zero first and nothing else. And when I put my mouse over it, you can see it gets highlighted. So we just selected and confirmed that using this X pass, we can get to this particular field in the UI. And automation by using this code will also be able to get to it, right? Uh, there is another way to get to the element in the console, and that is using CSS. So when you do the CSS selection, do two dollar signs like this, and then open uh, parentheses again. Now within those parentheses, you provide your CSS. The CSS for this one will be, so again, in double quotes, I'm going to put, uh, and then in square brackets, I'm going to put ID is equal single quote password, single quote, run it. And now I also get this element returned back. You can see I can uh, highlight, right? Uh, one more way to get the same element again using CSS if I can go directly to the ID shortcut. Uh, so to this guy right here, ID equals password, just shortcut for it. So that will be hashtag password. Right, and it highlights it again. You can see it's highlighted. IDs should be unique. So when you use hash and password, that means that you expect there's gonna be only one element that contains that specific ID. So you'll get to that particular element and that element will be returned to you. Okay, so this is a quick example on how you can reach uh, the same element using different methods. Directly by XPath, uh, by CSS, using attribute and value or by CSS using ID specifically, right? Okay, and uh, if you click on this circle with a forward slash inside of it, right? Right here, uh, it will clear the console or control L. So hit on it and we're gonna have no more code inside the console, the console is clear. Now let's also find the username uh, field the same way we did with the password. So like right click it inspect and you see it gets highlighted in the elements and here we have in the html we have input type equals text name is equal to username and id is equal to the username so let's find it by using name uh, username right here uh, using x pass so we're going to do dollar sign x parentheses and double quotes open and close then within those double quotes we're going to say uh, forward slash forward slash so we search through the whole thing we're going to say uh, the tag is input now uh, we're going to open square brackets and then we will say uh, name is equal and then here in single quotes we're going to say username all right Okay, so what did we forget? We forgot at symbol, at name equal username. Now, uh, if I will expand it and then hover over uh, the first field here, uh, the one with zero in it, we can see this username field gets highlighted. Okay, perfect. So we found uh, the element using X pass and going directly into this name equal username, right? Okay, um, let's do this with CSS. But now we're gonna use the shirt version. So we're gonna use uh, uh, dollar sign, dollar sign, op open parentheses, uh, double quotes, open and close. And then within those double quotes, I'm just gonna do ID. How we can do the shortcut for ID, so uh, hashtag, and do a user username press enter we have a response let's expand it and right here it is highlighted perfect we found it okay uh, let's clear out the console again and right click on the login button okay so over here uh, we have different bunch of things so there's a text uh was in the button says login um, there is class radius and type submit, some information about the element, 
So how can we find it now? So, well, probably let's try it by type. So uh, with X pass, let's do again, dollar sign X, open parentheses, within parentheses, let's do double quotes. And now let's do forward slash, forward slash, uh, button, right? Then square brackets, within those square brackets, we're gonna say at type equals and then in quotes, single quotes here equals uh, submit. And let's hit enter. We have a button return and we see it's been highlighted. Hmm. Okay, that is perfect. Uh, all right, what else we have here? Well, we have for class, for CSS, can you use class, we have radius. Let's see what happens if we're gonna use radius. Uh, so dollar sign, dollar sign, open parentheses, double quotes, do dot. So that highlights that we're looking for, for a specific class and then type radius. Let's press enter. And again, we have the button being returned. Okay, so those are the two main uh, methods you can use to search for uh, particular elements. So CSS, versus XPath. We're gonna focus on them uh, as we go through the course. And then later on, we're gonna also add uh, Playwright locators. So you'll have a good arsenal of different locators. You can use different ways how you can reach an element. Why is it important to have this knowledge? Well, if your website changes a lot, if the structure of it changes, uh, some things might get moved around. And if you have locators that were generated by different tools or uh, maybe that not robust in general, as soon as something gets updated, your automation is gonna crash because your automation is not gonna be able to find the elements to interact with anymore. So the whole purpose of having stable locator is if anything gets changed on the web page, your automation can still find the element, it can still reach it and click on it if that element exists, right? And if it was removed, then it will not be able to interact with it and the test will fail regardless. Uh, yeah, so the idea behind what we're doing is practicing on finding good stable locators, understanding how to find them. Uh, we're gonna learn about HTML structure. We're gonna learn about more about XPath and CSS, the playwright locators, what is the difference between them, which one you should use. Uh, so by the end of the course, you should be able to open a web page, find a stable locator, uh, and then when you start working automation, you will be able to use the skills to find the best ones that you will be using for your automation to stay stable. Okay. All right. So hopefully this is helpful. It was Alex USA Days. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.